Your body is not who you are. You shed it like a snake sheds its skin. You transfer the human consciousness between bodies to live eternal life. How long have I been down? 250 years. You are the property of Bancroft Industries. You've been provided with this body, which came equipped with military-grade Neurochem and combat muscle memory. Mr. Kovach, I didn't ask you to bring me back into this world. All I ask of you is that you solve a murder. Whose? Mine. This is the beginning. Whoever murdered him must be found, or we're all in danger. I'm gonna need access that you don't want to give. And I'm gonna find answers that you may only think you want. Friends, enemies, people with opportunity and motive. You can't trust anybody. If you don't solve this quickly enough, I'll erase you. Of the end. There's more here than you're willing to see. Mystery needs to be solved. And Lieutenant? You know, saving your ass is not my only job. I like her. This is the beginning. I'm your host, Soli. We're here for another sit down. This time, dissecting uh, Netflix sleeper hit. It is the book adaptation that is Altered Carbon, best described as a cyberpunk answer to Blade Runner and then some. I brought along super mega TV show fans, Patrick Hardy. Say hi. Hey, how you doing? Pleasure and to meet you guys. Anytime. And Sandra Williams. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm couldn't be better. Uh, That's good. We need a global retrospect. We need. Yeah. And lo and behold, I, I don't think I've ever seen such a show that like skyrocketed. And Netflix or Wikipedia was claiming, oh, it was met with positive reviews. But every review I was seeing of the show, it was getting mocked by critics who like. I don't know if they found it confusing or weren't fans of the genre, but I think they took a lot of teeth out of it. Personally, I I, I think they took a lot of teeth out of it. I mean, by removoving like you know even the rape scene, you know, as, you, as you know the torture scene, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, of. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a big. Books. Yeah, yeah, that 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 thing was like like cut out, and it was like cut out before the show was even. That was like one was on the table. They were t- like that had to go. So, oh wow! So yeah, so they took were... a lot of teeth out of it, I think, and like I think that, and I think the the Quell Quest stuff, the 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 what that it isn't in the first book either, really. Oh, it's kind of a little weird, it's a little confusing, maybe. Out uh, the reviews I was reading, it just seemed like they just don't like any kind of Blade Runner or Matrix type cyberpunk show, and I was like, then why are you guys here? I thought the whole that's, point of being a critic is to recommend something while also giving me your own take, saying it's not for me personally. And I, I, this had a, a ginormous like ratings and audience score and just shitty critic score. So I'm just like, what's going on here? <laughs> I think also yeah. it was a little bit of the back and forth. There was a lot of back and forth, and it got a bit confusing at times. Oh, just the flashbacks. Sometimes. Gotcha. Yeah, just 
trying to figure out which character is who and what sleeve. Sometimes I was like, who is this person? Got to go back and double check who it is all the time. Gotcha. That's a fair, that's a fair I mean, it is a lot. I, I did get confused at parts of season two halfway through when they introduced the politicians and everything, but Mm-hmm. Why do you think mm-hmm. some people rejected who was playing certain versions of the same character when they establish, kind of like Doctor Who, he's going to literally change his skin? So mm. I, I didn't understand why some people had issues with Joel Kinnaman versus Brian Mann versus Anthony Mackie and William Lee. I'm like, well, it's Kovacs. He's Yeah, I just love all of them. All of them, it's the same person. It really doesn't matter who's playing it as long as they're playing it well. Yeah, yeah, and it's British. kind of a fun spot, the British, New York, or Canadian actor. You got Tamara Taylor <laughs> as the lawyer from Bones. You got Max Headroom himself, you know, Matt Brewer. Uh, Tom O'Pinnacott was in the first um, the first episode. Yeah, yeah, uh, Halo from Battlestar Galactica, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. him. I got to meet him. I got to meet him, and he's such a nice man. I, I bet he is. He is just one of those, you never know if he's going to be that a uh, traitor or a troublemaker or a guy mm-hmm. with a good idea who goes downhill. You got Kristen Lehman from uh, various Matt Flanagan shows, and she was also in The Killing. Uh, James Purefoy hamming it up as the wealthiest man alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I, the ultimate math, man. Yep. Uh, De- Deacon yeah. Lawman, who's been at a bunch of other sci-fi and action shows, and uh, Otto... Uh, Asoda, who's been on everything from Chicago Med to uh, Django Unchained, and it, but yeah, you, Simon Musak, yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, uh, Luke Cage yourself, <laughs> and uh, all together, it's uh, all. All the only thing I knew about is that they changed uh, the ho- interactive hologram that runs the hotel. Like originally, it was like someone else and then they went with Edgar Allan Poe but I can't remember who was the original thing in the books I I just seem to recall someone said it was changed up like it was some other character but that persona was too controversial so they said let's not have it be Edgar Allan Poe yeah I can't remember remember either um (laughs) I I know they made some pretty drastic changes um that, Were that, you guys uh, big cyberpunk junkies prior to that in general? Like, you just read oh, anything? Oh, oh, yeah, sci-fi? yeah, definitely. This, this room's full of Blade Runner and, and you know, uh, Elysium. And, uh, oh, yeah, Bones, District so. 9. Uh, I District mean, 9. even The Expanse is another example where both the fans yeah. of the book and the standalone TV fans are just pleased with it. So this is kind of just the way of the future. If you want streaming to explode, you got to just have a uh, serialized crazy mystery in a in the future <laughs> what'd you think of the oh, first sorry one? it was it got canceled um, it, that was sad it was the hendrix estate i'm just reading it now he wouldn't license the image so they couldn't use it oh, oh okay that's right yeah, that's right it was jimmy, that's right yeah jimmy hendrix yeah that makes sense i mean jimmy's just yeah. too cool i don't think he wants to hang around shady people at a hotel but yeah <laughs> yeah shame. it is funny when they'll say yes versus when they'll say no but yeah. uh, I don't know. Like, because I mean, they definitely went over the top with the violence, just like in on some in some stuff, and then like t- like it's like they they it's like they wanted to go there, but they didn't in some places. I don't know. I don't know if they had notes or if they just wanted to make everyone uneasy, especially in the claustrophobic just moments where he's waking up, having the memories, like, or being like attacked by stuff. assassins in heaven or whatever. The 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 the, the brothel is. Pretty wild stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't he, he, yeah, hid in the clouds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know how. how um, His own kind of heaven. You could really pull some <laughs> of that stuff off, really. Necessarily, it's a little rough. Yeah, it's a good question because, I, I mean, they they do kind of deliberately kind of enhance it by showing how it's larger than life and other times they kind of go for deliberately absurd just to show how it's only yeah. just an idea and concept um yeah um yeah you take the rawness out of it if you do that you know what i mean kind you, of you take the you take like <laughs> the, you know, the soul a little bit i think um, you know, like you make it as, if, you, if you if you really ground it and you make it as grisly as you know if you go there then i think you get that that uh then, then people i think have a tendency to 
to really dig in. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's yeah, you know, the success of like you know, hostile, for instance. So you know, yeah, but from I, a hostile. Like, really went there and like shot people, but I, I'm sure someone reined him in. I guess I don't know, uh, but yeah. uh, did anyone recognize uh, Quell, uh, the leader of that other mercenary group, uh, Renee? Elise Goldberry, you might know her from Hamilton and a bunch of other things, but uh, I was just kind of blown away by the gal playing the lieutenant uh, with the police, uh, Martha so, Hydrega. Uh, she's apparently a very international uh, Mexican actress, so this is as a big international kind of appeal. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought the Ortega character was really good. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, uh... it's kind of everything. It's one minute it's Chinatown, the next minute it's like a police corruption and business investigation show. Then it's still a who am I, an identity the crisis. Military corporate espionage type stuff. Oh, yeah, especially in season yeah. two, yeah. And uh, all together, I just find it interesting how... Uh, how do you even write this, you know? Like, it, it's so much to just take in, let alone have to illustrate to people so i can only imagine not just the amount of visual effects preconception the storyboarding but how do you even envision what will be filmed against a green screen versus what will be uh just all all done in post you know just like i I think well these days they rely a little bit too much on post i think this i think it kills their budget in a lot of cases personally but uh it probably uh, does. Um, yeah, I heard yeah. rumors of a season. That was one of the complaints about Marvel. So it, yeah, it I think kind of that's. Like, um, I, I, know, I, but I at heard... the same time, you see like people like the expanse how they executed there. Like, I think they did a great job, at least in the first season of Altered Carbon. Some of those shots at the beginning are stunning. Yeah, um, definitely. Can't take your eyes off it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. cityscape shot where he walks is fantastic. Um. But you know, you can, the characters you can, also speak when okay. they need to speak instead of yeah. over explaining the plot to you. And yeah, they're trying to teach you like an adult, hopefully, right? Right. And <laughs> uh, it's definitely the most human as you're going to get for talking about <laughs> cyborgs. And yeah, you know, it's like, am I com- literally, am I comfortable in my own skin? <laughs> or am I just worried about my soul? <laughs> I'm comfortable in somebody else's. Right. Living someone else's life. Which, as a result, means you got to impersonate them, uh, borrow some of their thoughts. Uh, let alone you have some of the, you share some of their enemies now. <laughs> uh, Not to mention the gender bending, that, that alone can screw a marriage up, I imagine. So <laughs> it, it, it depends on who you are, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I love how The Verge decided to say this has a lack of focus on relationships between the characters. What show were they watching? Like, literally, yeah, there are endless yeah, flashbacks to them having failed relationships and everything. So maybe he yeah, was yeah. just not involved or invested. I, I'm i done. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was... Um... Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was really um sad when Ortega brought back her grandmother for that dinner and then she says to her, please don't do it again. I think it's, you know, it's... It's yeah. quite yeah thoughtful. reincarnation resurrection yeah, is a big right. theme here like Galactica and that they, they they get real all heavy into just you know I can't let you go even though uh, I'm I swear I'm not being selfish but you're saying I'm being selfish because you want to die and I don't want anyone yeah. to die. <laughs> Elliot sitting there, um, you know, seeing his daughter over and over again, even though he's suffering, and he knows that she is, but he just keeps doing it because he can't help himself. Yeah, uh, we are gluttons for our own punishment in a way. And would we really do that in real life, or would we stop it? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> we've had this when we've talked about when we lose a pet or some other just great best friend who we. We are their unofficial family. It's just a very emotional thing to rile up. And this is why I like hard sci-fi like this, because now we're comfortable kind of talking about something like this without getting too melodramatic or too heavy handed. And Mm. we can leave it to our imagination instead of getting carried away with a personal argument, you know, in public. (laughs) Yeah. 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 
Um, have you seen Dollhouse that has um, Dishon Larkman in it as well? Uh, I, I, I saw some of that when that was first out, uh, but that, that was kind of just a reminder of how you couldn't go anywhere without seeing some kind of sci-fi show. That was like mm. the next best thing since sliced butter. You know, it was like it, it was everywhere on network, on cable. And, uh, mm. but yeah, that was basically Josh Whedon's pet project. Yes. And yes, it was. It's, it's, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big D- Dyke and Lightman fan. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I could like Lickman. Lickman, and Lickman, Lickman, I, 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 I pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, German descent originally. Uh, well, uh, who, who would you? <laughs> who would you say is the probably gives the best performance out of all these guys? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> maybe. I don't okay. know. No, because because yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think they, I can and. Uh, William Lee are definitely given career best for their own respect, but yeah. uh, in general, of as the best of the best, like you know them for only this role. Yeah, I I don't recognize the Edgar Allan Poe guy from anything else. But no, no, it was pretty good. Um, I yeah. thought Anthony Mackie did uh, Mackie did a great job. I mean, he's usually in you know the Marvel movies. I think he did pretty good. I crossed the stars in a colony ship before stacks were invented. Left a dying earth behind to see the new world. Mr. Kovach, I know what you dream of. Your resleeving is now complete. This book designed by Kamalo Bioware. Military use only. Rapid healing, enhanced reaction time, among other bells and whistles. Oh my. Of all the godforsaken rocks we've been to, we're right back where we started. Harlan swore? Thought you swore you'd never return. What compelled you? I'm still looking for her, and I can't walk away. That's not love, it's obsession. Sometimes even love turns to dust. Tuck! Kill! you need, whatever it costs, cut out their stacks and bring them to me. The whole planet's going to be hunting him. We're in danger here. Oh, I assure you, measures will be taken. I can destroy you so utterly nothing will be left. I've heard that one before. Activate Evergreen. Confirm. Are you so far gone you don't recognize yourself? Ah! How does it feel to be afraid of death again? Or is this your first time? Oh, absolutely. I I saw a lot of people who didn't like him in this and i was like why he do you want him to just play falcon no i i've been a fan mm. before he was even a marvel guy <laughs> he's fantastic at twisted metal even i kind of like twisted and metal. eight mile i it's couldn't twisted believe metal, he was in eight fun. mile yeah he was in so many other movies with like sam jackson and even other stuff with jeremy renner but no that that, that eight I, mile, I, I, do, I, I do need to see twisted metal i i but yeah the, the actor's just he has charisma and I just find it so funny how people keep getting him mistaken for Jay Farrow, who can do an impersonation of him. <laughs> yeah, not a mentory candidate. Yeah, he's fantastic, man. Oh, there you go. Yeah, the remake was good. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know why people want to just make a scene of this. I I can understand if the plot didn't go the way you wanted to, but to me, that just kind of feels like more of a Matrix kind of thing where people are mistaking, I don't find this interesting with. Uh, I don't know how else this ends, but I just want to complain about it. <laughs> mm. Everyone wants yeah. to complain. I just like the. I just like going along for the ride. I love watching something that has yeah. great characters and is definitely nothing like our future is ever going to be. Well, we hope it's never going to be like that, but it's I just a not. futuristic. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the futuristic and all, like you say, all the 
details and the you know some of the scenery that they had there was just so beautiful it was just a different change up every every episode every scene and i just like that right uh who who mm. doesn't want to get behind that and have fun with it <laughs> uh, yeah the fact that anyone wants to even just uh binge this you know that's already telling in and of itself well at the time right it was the second most expensive television show right after game of thrones right um, was it really oh, wow. yeah. They really wow. did drop some money into it. So wow, that that blows my that. mind. <laughs> you didn't know that it was like ten or twelve million an episode or something. Like that. Do you it was think quite it was the actors' contracts, or was it just more of the visual effects experience? I'm sure the <laughs> the effects and all the build up stuff. Yeah, it, it, I would hope so. Because yeah, Thrones, like I guess you could say the directors and set designs the is that they, killing they most of the budget sure <laughs> on the stage. Um, yeah, that's wild. You know. Yeah. Uh, that is, a, but, that is uh, a lot of money <laughs> well and th this year alone I did see some rumors start again about a season 3 I don't know how much of that is fans starting it up or clickbait going to town or legit yeah. talk about it coming back because Netflix oh, seems to be the worse worse than yeah. Fox on the dollhouse yeah, point earlier at cancelling stuff There's after no two way. years Netflix is mm, just they... property for sure Ah. Yeah, Doll Dollhouse ended on such a a sad note, and it, you, it was left for wanting. And I hate when that happens. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot to take in because then you got to kind of reset, saying, "Well, I'm getting on with my life," even though there's there's no conclusion to this. Mm. Right, it's lost all over again. <laughs> oh God, don't even start with that, please. <laughs> um, did um did everyone like the altered carbon ending though? If you if that was going to be the ending, would that be all right with you? Uh, I'll take it for what it is. I to me, if they're not going to continue it, at least this needs at least an IDW or Dynamite comics or Dark Horse like follow up <laughs> somewhere along the way. Like just, uh, I I just want. Did anybody I, do I don't, one? I don't think are there comics? I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, there's there's some comics, but they're kind of just okay. more just. I mean, I know they, they did the animated thing on, uh, right, on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I haven't seen that yet, but I want to. I, I, I saw the anime. It, it was kind of a little inconsistent for me, but it was kind of more of a just a side story explaining some of the okay. Yakuza bosses. But if anything, like, I would just want it to just kind of at least maybe green light a, a spinoff. Now that we kind of got mm. the main story of the main characters out of the way, yeah. how about we do a fun... Uh, just anthology. There's a lot mm. you can play with there. You know, needle casting Something. people everywhere. And yeah. Yeah. All together, I mean, there's no denying that it just has a lot of appeal. And the fact that we can even just salivate about it, just like endlessly, just thinking about uh why this world is so fascinating, why it is just, uh, you can't just watch just one episode. I mean, I, I think that's telling it of itself, but uh, it is very dense. Uh, I, I still, again, I, I guess, wow. Uh, if you were going to introduce someone to this, what would you do to kind of keep them from being confused by it? Would you just kind of test their knowledge? Like, how big are you into this kind of subgenre? Isolated cities, dystopias, and futuristic yeah, I listeners. I, I don't think I would even suggest it to somebody unless they were like a hardcore sci-fi fan. Gotcha. You know, I, mm -hmm. um, so I would I wouldn't suggest Blade Runner unless they were you were a hardcore sci-fi fan either. You know, because everybody who isn't they hate it. Um, which yeah. just kind of the way it goes, right? Um, and that's sad, True. but kind of, kind of kind of a sad thing about cyberpunk, actually. It really like is. Are you either like a diehard fan or you're just not, it's not your flavor. Oh, totally. I, I see so many people who don't even seem to know what neo noir is anymore half the time. I'm like, really? Oh, that's, <laughs> you can, yeah, you just so. named me five other well known uh, mystery movies and everything, but you don't know what this and that means. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> I usually just say to someone, watch an episode of something and you're either going to like it or you're not. You're either going to get it or you're not. Right. And don't 
act like it's the worst thing you've ever seen unless you've actually suffered through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. I don't know, man. <laughs> I couldn't get to Lord of the Rings, man. I well, tried. That's fine, too. I mean, see, I you it. gave it a chance. Uh, I will <laughs> I will suffer through a season of a show before I... I'm going to get through an episode of that one without falling asleep. Oh, well, that that's fine, too. Uh, Lord of the Rings <laughs> is dense, also, and I uh, I see it with even the Star Wars, Star Trek, Babylon 5 arguments. And, you know, it's just let people like what they like. But, you know, just if you're going to watch it, you know, do what you would do with maybe a a movie. Watch it beginning to end. If you're going to fast forward, at least watch a good chunk of it before you're just like, hey, and tuning out. It's not appealing to me. It's pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you, you give it a fair chance. I think that's a fair, that's a fair assessment. Something. Like I can't, I can't fast through. I'm one of those people that just has to see it through to it the end, suffer. no matter how. Awful. <laughs> no, it's all good. Just have to suffer, suffer for the art. You just have to do it. Whatever you got to do to just say, "Hey, I put in the time. It paid off, or it didn't." <laughs> mm. Sometimes yeah. you just got to watch the bombs jump the shark, man. Oh, there you go. <laughs> happy days. No, you you had to have it. a happy days reference. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Well, and half the time I feel when we watch a movie or show, if we've grown out of it or not cared for it, generally I think it's because, I don't know, we expected something different. But then there's other ones where it's like, no, I I knew I was cool with whatever, but that one felt like it was made up on the spot or like, I, like I, for instance, don't care for the ending of Sopranos because it just feels like they wanted to just pissed fans off because they were tired of dealing with fan questions. It's like, well, life just ends. But yeah. What does that even mean? Mm. Just illustrate the character's life and end it. And if you don't want to end it, then, I don't know, give it to someone else don't. to write. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think maybe maybe some of the issues come from writing from with a, by committee. You know what I mean? Instead of just giving it to one creator to to go hog wild with instead of like yeah get have the story nobody's as dumb as all of us you know? <laughs> right <laughs> don't talk down to us and don't just abandon it like hey yeah it doesn't matter oh well it kind of does matter we've only invested five years of our life <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> oh man it's wild it's wild uh what do you think a season three would look like if anything like do you think he would be on the run still from other people he'd wronged in the past or helping revolutionaries fight another member of this chaotic government? <laughs> really, the second one. For anything, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, I, really, you could just literally just spin him up for anything as a hero in any situation. In any. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I, I felt I, they were hinting at, but they didn't uh, elongate with was that it's not like he's the chosen one or anything, but he does seem like the guy who's an endurer, so to speak. And now that he's accepted that, uh, like, season one's pretty much him finding out all the bizarre, discombobulated memories and uh, his identity crisis. And yeah, he's his family, family issues. Too, right? right, and season two, he pretty much just brings the tank down, saying it's time to end all these, cor- all, you know, Friends close, enemies closer. I'm going to take down the corruption that I can, especially since, coincidentally, almost all these guys uh, happen to not only be wrecking the world, but be wrecking my world. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If anything, I, I, all I can say is just go a little bigger and go and fight a bigger menace. Yeah. Uh, maybe even go after the millionaire, take, take over his mansion <laughs> and say, yeah. thanks for the hospitality, but you're still... The pain in everyone's side. <laughs> or how about the moment when he actually? How about the moment where he realizes he is a meth because he's been around forever? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That would be fun. Totally. I'd like say existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I, some, some. I can see an actor eating that one up personally. Uh, make it. Wait. Uh, I'm surprised fans haven't done their web series <laughs> version of it. <laughs> the fanfic, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it's out there. If we delve into it hard enough, we'd find I it. I will look for it. And if it's not, then I will I will co-fund an audio drama with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so it, it, w- would you guys rank this, I guess, as like maybe a top 10 in terms of cyberpunk movies and shows? Like, I put in top 10 cyberpunk shows for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it just it it's, it's tough to I, compete with films though. Like, because a lot of great cyberpunk films out there. Because Blade Runner fans in alone themselves, I find a little confusing. Because I saw some who loved the original but did not care for the new one, even though it was almost just as long and just oh, as I'm diehard man. I'm right. diehard in the Blade Runner so, franchise. I guess the other question is: Would some people who don't like Blade Runner probably like this? Because it seems like it's People who like the Matrix definitely love this, and then other people who don't care for the Matrix still might like it because it's just fast paced and they like the actors from other sci fi horror anthology shows. Like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess, where you yeah. send people who like the Matrix? I don't know what you what like if you're like a big Matrix fan. I don't know where you go from there uh, for cyberpunk. <laughs> cause... I it's uh, Matrix fans. I don't know how to interpret them either because I see some who love. The first one, hate the sequels. I- I'm one of those. I love the whole trilogy, but can't stand the fourth one because I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna there. What, yeah I'm Why do you even there. bring that back?" <laughs> yeah, I even love the um Animatrix. I remember watching yes. that the first time. And just saying, oh my god, no, it was absolutely amazing. Talk about an anthology. Yes, that was great. I remember watching it. I think I might have been a bit stoned actually and freaking out. Hey, but... <laughs> you know that whatever adds to the fire. <laughs> Yeah, and then watching it again and just thinking how the detail and the story, even if it didn't make any sense, was still beautiful. Uh, just uh, what's weird is I see a lot of religious people who don't seem to get all the Jewish imagery, and I've seen it with that and RoboCop, and I'm like, really? I thought it was blatantly obvious. He's being resurrected. He's the second coming of Christ. Oh, RoboCop, of course, and Joel was in that as well. I like. I actually really liked the the remake of that. I thought it was different, but what oh, oh, is RoboCop? Dread. Yeah, Judge Dredd too. Well, yeah, I, Judge Dredd strip. That's why I I think I liked it. It was very much like the new Dread. I was, but a lot of people rejected it. They're like, it's not funny. I'm like, oh, there's still some satire. Like Sam Jackson's character is a Fox News guy, you know, and the basically all, uh, the the giant corporation instead of being you know an expensive corporation is basically a Blackwater slash police state. And so I thought yeah. that was very telling, and especially. For the the fear mongering that goes on today, and don't get me wrong, Altered Carbon has plenty of that too. I mean, uh, all these mercs basically are dying for a totally different cause and trying to brainwash people endlessly. And I think that's what ultimately appealed to me the most was that the main protagonist keeps you in suspense as to where he resides, whose side he's on. Is he loyal to the cop he has a romance with? Is he loyal to only himself? Is he loyal to his last remaining friends from another life? Or is he loyal to one of the various revolutionaries? Or is he going to keep playing them for fools until they all collapse? You know, and I got to root for the underdog. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope none well, of us ever have chaotic post-apocalyptic I think it's lifestyle. probably their best sci-fi property. Like, Alter Carbon is probably the best sci-fi property that it was show-wise that they produced at, at, at Netflix, Netflix by in my far, opinion. Yeah. I, at least now. I, I, Rebel Moon. I don't know if you've seen the stuff from that. Is jaw dropping. I, I haven't. Uh, Rebel Moon. Okay. Yeah. Look at the tr- look at the. They got a three minute teaser out. For oh two wow. Two films. Oh oh the upcoming Zack Snyder show. Yes, I did hear about this. Yeah, this is the Star Wars script that he had and he pitched and they turned down and then now yeah. Netflix picked up and reworked it. It looks also amazing. That, it does look pretty stunning. Uh, well. I know what I'll be checking out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what people should do nowadays. Instead of at wait, I mean, that's what David Twahai did with the Riddick movies. He took his rejected alien free script and he went bananas. He's like, okay, yeah. we got bounty hunters, now, we got if, alien creatures. I don't know though. I think like like if you're in the position like Blomkamp, for instance, on the Alien Five script that he had, yeah, um, that that would have been amazing. It oh, never really? happened. But uh, the, the, I think that it's probably optioned. And that's why you still haven't seen a release of it online, mm-hmm. that actual script. Because it, it would have existed, at least a, a, a draft at that point, because they were scouting locations. Yeah, so I was really bummed. 
because basically much like Deadpool, they put the Fox's X on the spot and then they still didn't allow him to make it because Ridley Scott stepped in and I don't know about you yeah, guys. I can't do whatever, Prometheus yeah. at all, but yeah, I, I understand yeah, would have been amazing. <laughs> like the, the just from the artwork, it was stunning. Yeah, I mean they could still probably do it as an anime. So I, I'm with you guys. Uh, much like they've done with Halo and Animatrix, let alone all these other Marvel and DC, you know, legend and Star Wars legend shows. Just do yeah. do do that with this. They should just have, uh, uh, you know, because. So Gordon Weaver already, much like Schwarzenegger said, I'm done playing the Terminator. The last one was supposed to be the last one. Why are you asking me? Uh, as Gordon recently yeah. said, no more Ripley. So I'm like, cool. Mm-hmm. Get a sound alert. Yeah. There's plenty of talented cartoon and video game voice actors out there. Just uh, have have them do an anthology, just unfinished tells. Because like I heard the original like Alien Free done as a audi- audible drama. I, I wasn't really digging it, but I was at least glad that, hey, Here's something for other fans who want a different version of this. I mean, it's just like when you can offer. We talk. We keep talking about Blade Runner. There's again five versions of that movie. I like that. Let people decide which version of the movie they're comfortable with, instead of oh, you can only get this version or that copy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, there's with, there's like, what, like, our main there's like twenty different versions of Blade Runner out there. You know. Right. If we can have many versions of Kovacs on screen. Why can't we have yeah. any versions of the movie or show yeah, that we love? For sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, Battlestar uh, Galactica I'm still does for that. The day that we get Event Horizon. Uh, yeah, there you go. The uncut version. The original Event Horizon script would be nice. Or cut. Uh, yeah, do a comic book adapting the script or something. Uh, I actually uh, heard uh, uh, Amazon picked it up, I heard, as a show. I heard that, but I don't know if it's true. Oh, that's interesting. Somebody also just picked up 13 Ghosts. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we're going yes. into hard, hard, hard sci-fi horror territory here, guys. Like, there is so much stuff that is just coming out now where now people want to see all these movies they grew up loving and see an action, like, the uncut version of them. And, yeah, I- I'm for it. Because if you can have this many versions of Kovacs, if you can have this many versions of the- these movies and shows, and, just- and the studios aren't going to ever release those director's cuts, you might as well just find a different uh, mode to just kind of explore what wasn't made. <laughs> Although I'm not sure if I'm on board with the Harry Potter coming out again. I'm just, I just don't, I don't even want to think about it. Oh, right are now. they remaking that? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be oh, like a Harry Potter Potter fan. Interesting. No yeah. cats, no Harry Potter here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I, I can see that being done, but. It's still going to divide people. <laughs> yes, definitely. I'm a book fan, so I just don't even want to think about it right now. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, where can we find you two on the interwebs? Uh, you're you're very active in various Facebook groups. And, uh, all hail the power of geekdom. Yeah. Yes, love everything. I just love ev- everything. Everything is just amazing. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. on Facebook, and I um, admin the um, two Altered Carbon um, Facebook groups. All right, great. Absolutely. Okay, I'm out. Yeah, I, okay, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. have the Missing Collection, uh, and it's the underscore Missing Collection, underscore Missing Collection on Instagram and uh, this Facebook group, and uh, I also admin the Screen News Prop group. Um, otherwise, I think I'm just a a drifter. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm to check it out. I'm a rebel, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as on, on Facebook, it's just the missing collection. No, just spaces. But missing yeah. collection. You heard it. Cool. Thank you. Anytime, guys. Yeah. It was uh, fun. Uh, no shortage here, and we'll we'll have you back on no, definitely in the future. We 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 talked back and forth on some of the yeah private messaging and everything. But uh, yeah, for those who heard this, hopefully. If you haven't already checked it out, if you're wanting to rewatch it, but skeptical as to what episodes you like or dislike, just we're, we're all here for everything with the words AC in it. You know? Watch <laughs> it for the naked sword. No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> I might get your boyfriend or girlfriend to watch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Okay, man. You guys rock this. <laughs> 
All right. Thank cool. you so much. Anytime. Yeah, thanks. We'll return after these messages. The Jacked Up Review Show podcast is honored to be part of the Blind Knowledge Podcast Network. Join anytime, talk the talk, and enjoy yourselves. There's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy. You got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates. Most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always, am I the winner? (laughs) Yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America vs. Darth Vader, Solid Snake vs. the Iron Giant, classic matchups like Robocop vs. Terminator, and even the Muppets vs. Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.